Hello and welcome to this Year 9 lesson on the Weimar Republic by 1928. This lesson is going to look at the position of the Weimar Republic in 1928 and help you to revise what you have done so far on the Weimar Republic. You know what I'm going to say now. I'm going to say that you need your lesson notes template and you should have had that sent to you or you will find it in all the usual places and the most obvious place is in the description at the bottom of this video you will find a link to a google doc which will allow you to open it up and here presto you will have the lesson notes template so get that ready settle in and here we go Okay, so one of the things that we must not do is we must not read history backwards. All right, so we're going to try and understand at this point in the Weimar Republic's history in 1928 what the situation was in terms of how stable the democracy was. Before we do that, let's briefly look at what happened to the Weimar Republic in the end. And then we'll come back to where it was in 1929 to 1932 saw tremendous political and economic pressures placed upon the Weimar Republic. Pressures that ultimately it was not able to withstand. In many ways, democracy in Germany at this time was like a staked tree, a young fledgling whose roots had not grown deep enough since 1918. So that when the violent winds of political and economic change came, the tree blew over. In other words, democracy collapsed and along with it, the Weimar Republic went, replaced by a new darker time where the Nazis were able to establish a dictatorship and the Third Reich was born. Okay, so that's all very doom and gloom with me in a cellar appearing quite menacing and talking about the terrible demise of the Weimar Republic and the rise of the Nazis. And if we look at history and if we read it backwards, we see the demise of the Weimar Republic in the period from 1929 to 1932, and we look back to the period from 1918 to 1928, and we say, well, obviously, it was always going to end in tears. The Weimar Republic was always going to collapse. Democracy was never very stable, because look what happened in the end. The reality is that people in Germany at the time, in the late 1920s, were not counting down the clock for democracy to implode. They were not every day thinking we are one step closer to the Weimar Republic collapsing things were not that simple and what's really important is that we get a sense of the lack of inevitability about the Weimar Republic collapsing I'll say that again the lack of inevitability about the Weimar Republic collapsing in the previous lesson when we talked about the Nazis we said the Nazis only had 2.8 percent of the vote 2.6 percent of the vote in 1928 they were an irrelevance so it's not the case that it was inevitable that hitler was going to take power in the same way just because the weimar republic collapsed in the period 1929 and 1932 which we're going to see in lessons coming up and just because the nazis became the biggest party and just because hitler was appointed chancellor in 1933 that doesn't mean that those things were always going to happen okay there is a lack of inevitability about those. right so the first task is for us to have a look at what the position was in the weimar republic in 1928 
you were living in the Weimar Republic in 1928, you would not be counting down the days waiting for the whole thing to collapse. So what we want to think about is we want to think about what was positive for the Weimar Republic in this period, what was good, and what was negative in this period. So what was promising for the Weimar Republic in the period 1920, in, in the, that time period, specific snapshot in time in 1928 and what was not so promising what problems remained for the Weimar Republic in 1928 what potential difficulties could it face in the future based on some of the weaknesses that existed I want you to try and do this from memory first of all um, and then we'll come back and see what you came up with OK, so hopefully what you should get a sense of in your table is that you have got some things that were good, but also some things that were not so good. And the point is that the Weimar Republic was at a crossroads in 1928. Nobody really knew it was at a crossroads because nobody knew what was coming next. But as many things as were positive about the Weimar Republic, there were also some negatives and the the reality is and what i'm trying to to get across to you in this lesson is that things could have gone either way when we do lessons in the future you're going to see that the wall street crash came along and democracy was damaged by that and people rushed to support extremist groups etc etc and that's that's what happened but that isn't what was predestined to happen that isn't what was inevitably going to happen if there had been no wall street crash then the weimar republic would have continued and democracy would have continued and there would have been no rise of the nazis okay so in terms of positive things negative things we see on the left hand side some of the positives for the weimar republic um we've got Strasman and his entourage coming out of the car there um, as they go to agree the Dawes plan in 1924, we've got a more economically prosperous Germany by 1928. In fact, by 1929, the start of 1929, Germany returned to its pre-war industrial production level. So it, it, it had officially economically recovered. There is more political stability in 1928. Um, the parties that support democracy are in charge of the government and they are um, working as coalitions and supporting the Republic. Strasman's foreign policy we know about during the 1920s got Germany back into a position where they were respected by other countries. They felt as though they were part of Europe in, in a more equal way um, after they'd been oppressed um, and had the Treaty of Versailles imposed on them. There were generally low levels of support for extremist parties. We know that. We know the Nazis were getting 2.6% of the vote. Um, they were largely a political irrelevance in the late 1920s, uh, up until the Wall Street crash happened. And we know that there is a lot of cultural and artistic freedom in Germany at this time. And there was a lot of... Um, liberal expression different ideas and it was quite a vibrant place to be especially in urban areas like berlin however on the other side of the screen on the right hand side we see some of the problems there was um, an economy that was built on unstable foundations a lot of this prosperity was built on a loan from america that if recalled as it was in 1929 it was going to cause economic problems there was still the legacy of the Treaty of Versailles. Germany was still paying reparations. The 1929 Jung Plan that renegotiated some of those reparations um, was opposed by the Nazis and others because they said, why are we even paying for this anymore? We should have just destroyed the Treaty of Versailles. We shouldn't be still paying for it and cooperating with the Allies. Uh, we know about Article 48, which was in the Constitution, which would allow potentially for that Constitution to be subverted by um, one person it would allow for the Reichstag and the, the parliament to be um, overridden so there was still a general distrust in democracy 
the coalition governments were still a problem um, and coalition governments continued throughout the period of the mid 1920s during the so-called golden years and there was still because of the proportional representation system of voting the propensity to have several parties that work together rather than having one single party and we know that there were still extremist parties and they still had a strong base of support among some Germans. Okay, so the important thing that you should have got from that is the sense at which Weimar Republic was at a crossroads. So if we look back, we can see that it was at a crossroads. People at the time didn't know that because they didn't know what was coming next. But the point is that there were many things that were positive about the Weimar Republic in 1928, as well as some underlying problems. And it would be historically inaccurate to say that it was inevitable that the Weimar Republic was going to collapse and democracy was going to implode because we didn't people didn't know what was going to happen we it was not inevitable that the Weimar Republic was going to collapse and had the Wall Street crash not happened then the Weimar Republic would have continued democracy would have become stronger over time and we would not have seen the rise of the Nazis and communists and other extremist parties what you're going to do now is you're going to move on and do a little bit of revision of the Weimar Republic 1918 to 28. You've got a revision page here um, on the third page of your lesson notes template. You're going to read this. You're going to cover it over. You're going to switch the screen off or whatever you're going to do to cover it so you can't see it. You're going to write down as much as you can remember about the Weimar Republic in the period from 1918 to 28. And then you're going to go back and check and see what you got right. So pause this and have a go at doing that revision. Right, so the next thing you're going to do, a different type of revision, you're going to read that information again about the Weimar Republic from 1918 to 28. And as you're reading it, you're going to write down 10 questions about the information. So maybe read it through once. And then when you read it through the second time, uh, write down 10 questions. Don't write down the answers. Just write down the questions. And then cover the information, get somebody to test you on the questions, see if you're right, or test yourself and see if you are right. Um, if you have got um, a friend who is doing history, <clears throat> then maybe you could arrange to do the lesson at the same time and you could text each other 10 questions and you could test each other on the questions. Um, but if you're doing this on your own, read the information. Write the 10 questions down. Don't write the answers down when you're doing it. Um, and then go back to it and see if you can answer the questions without looking at the information. Then you can check your answers later by looking back at the information. So pause this and have a go at that. Okay, so moving on to task four, the final task of this lesson. Now it's my turn to set a little quiz. So um, here are 10 questions. Um, try and answer them without looking at the information um, on the third page of the lesson notes template. And in a moment, once you've paused this, I will come back and give you the answers. Okay, so here we have the answers to your quiz questions. Two terms of the Treaty of Versailles, you could have any of these. You could have the war guilt clause, you could have reparations. There was 
land taken away from Germany, the army and the navy had restrictions, there was demilitarization in the Rhineland, any of those and actually any one other one that you find that's listed in the information will be fine. What do we mean by the stab in the back myth? Well, this is the idea that was peddled by right-wing activists that the German politicians had stabbed the army in the back by ending the war too early. So in Hitler's mind, there was some sort of Jewish politician conspiracy that um, ended the war when it didn't need to be ended because they could have continued the war for longer. Um, what problems were posed for the Weimar Republic by proportional representation method of voting? It led to a lot, that should say, of unstable coalition governments because there was rarely a single party that had a majority. So you have um, several parties that get votes and those votes are spread out amongst these several parties. And so you don't tend to get one party that gets more than 50 percent. And if you don't have a party that gets more than 50 percent, they don't have a majority, in which case they have to share power with other parties. And that can make it difficult because they sometimes disagree with one another. And that leads to the government collapse. And then you have to have more elections. And for some people who were distrustful of democracy, that made it seem like the country was not very well organized. When was the Munich Putsch? That was November 1923. Wolfgang Kapp and his supporters were a member of which paramilitary group? That was the Freikorp. They didn't like the idea that they had to be disbanded. They were like a power. They were like a, a, a paramilitary is a as a an army that's not really the official army. So they didn't like that. But the Treaty of Versailles said that that had to be disbanded. What was the name of the temporary currency that Stresemann introduced to solve the hyperinflation crisis? That was the Rentenmark. What was agreed in the Dawes Plan of 1924? German reparation payments would be restructured and they would get $800 million in a loan from America to invest in the economy. In what year did Germany recover to the point where its industrial production levels were back to where they had been in 1913? The answer is 1929. What were the names of the murdered leaders of the Spartacist revolt? That's Karl Liebknecht and Rosa Luxemburg. And what organisation did Germany join in 1926? That was the League of Nations. So, give yourself a mark out of 10. See how you did. Right then, that brings us to the end of this lesson on the Weimar Republic by 1928. The main thing you should have got from this lesson, as well as doing some good revision of the actual content of the course on the Weimar Republic from 1918 to 1928, the main point I'm trying to get across, and at the risk of labouring it further, I will emphasise again here, is that if we look at the Weimar Republic in 1928 and we simply look at German society in that year, we cannot say that it was inevitable that somehow the Weimar Republic was going to collapse, that it was inevitable that there would be a, a rise of extremism and that the political situation in Weimar would deteriorate to the extent that we would end up with um, a right-wing dictatorship in the form of Nazism. It's just simply ahistorical to suggest that that is the case. What we in fact see is a society and a democracy that had a lot going for it, but yes, had some underlying problems as well. And unfortunately, because of the Wall Street crash and because of the political turmoil that, that brought with it in the wake of the economic catastrophe that hit Germany, the Weimar Republic was not able to withstand this and collapsed. But that was a specific historical circumstance. Some You could almost say a freak historical circumstance that led to the chain of events that ended up with the Weimar Republic collapsing. And the story of that chain of events is the story for our next few lessons. So that's the end of this lesson. Until next time, take care, stay safe, goodbye.